Hey, welcome back. So this is going to be the final video in this series, or not in this series, but in this section. And I'm going to be talking about something called a git ignore. So what is a git ignore? A git ignore basically allows you to sort of untrack files or keep them untracked permanently, or as long as you keep them in the file. So it's a file or a list of all of the files and directories that you do not want to track. So why would you use something like this? Well, there's a lot of files that you may not want. So for example, auto-generated files are very large and can be generated at any time. So if these files are similar to either one of those properties, you might not want to track them, especially because they can be rebuilt at any stage in the commit and it won't cause problems. So those are some examples of some files that you might not want to keep. So what I'm going to do is just create a, a new uh, a new text file here. It's just going to be something called log.txt. And basically, pretend that this is an auto-generated file. Every time I sort of made a difference or made a change, it would log the changes in this file. So I'm going to go and open this and type everything in. So just pretend that this can this doesn't really impact the project in any way. So firstly, let me just go and open this file right here. And I'm just going to say, I hope you enjoy. So pretend that this is the only file that I'm editing. I'm not editing anything else, but I go into my log and it also logs it. Pretend that that's a log. Let's go and check our status now. Now I actually did this before just to test it out. So you might see, oh my God, sorry. There we go. So you can see right here that we actually have something here. So we have modified file.txt and then we have an untracked file log.txt.txt. Of course, you can see I named it log.txt without uh, using the terminal. So of course, uh, it's log.txt. That's the name, .txt. Don't worry about that. So we don't know what this file is. What What's it doing here? So we don't really want it. So let's just, you know, commit it for now. Uh, we're going to add all of our files, commit it. But the thing is, we don't really want these files because some of them can get really, really large. And over time, it can make your project very slow and if you want to commit it's going to take much longer than it should because all of these files are so big and you don't really need them so i'm going to just say modified text file I'm just going to do that let's check our git status there we go so there's nothing there so let's just make another change for example i'm going to go into my new website and I'm going to add an, another exclamation mark or yeah, exclamation mark and I'm going to add my log. So I'm going to log it into my auto generated file by the computer or the software would do this. And now I'm going to check my status and there we go. You can see that it said modified log.txt.txt and then we keep committing and adding and you can see how this get, gets a little bit daunting and tedious after a while because if you want to untrack these, you have to do this every single time you want to make a new commit, which is going to get a little bit tiring after a while. So how are we going to fix this? Well, this is where our git ignore comes in. So I'm just going to finish this commit. There we go. So this is where our git ignore comes in. So I'm going to create a new file called git ignore dot git ignore doesn't have a name. So it's just dot and then git ignore, which is the file extension. Now, if we go back into here, you can see there's a file with uh, no name, so it doesn't have a name. So you're going to open it up. And now we have our dot git ignore. So let's talk a little bit about how the git ignore works. Pretty much, you're just going to input the names or the, oh, whoops, didn't mean to do that. You're just going to input the names of all of the files and directories you want to ignore. So I want to ignore my log.txt. What I would do is go log.txt.txt because that's the name of the file. I know it's a little bit confusing, but just bear with me for the time being. And let's say I wanted to ignore my home page as well because it's a static file. We don't really need to track it. So we're going to go homepage.jpg or jpg. There we go. So now we're no longer tracking these two files. But before that, I just want to organize this a little bit more. So I'm going to use hash and then I'm going to input a comment to identify these. So I'm going to say auto generated files. And then I'm going to say static files here. 
so things like images and other static files. So the hash followed by anything is going to be considered a comment. It's not going to be read by the git by git in this file. So what if we go ahead and check the status now? Let's just say I'm going to edit my log and I'm going to edit my file. I'm going to go there, edit my file, added maybe a smiley face, something like that. What if we go ahead and check our status? You can see here that it still says modified log.txt.txt. What's going on? I thought we put it in the git ignore. Well, the first reason is that the git ignore isn't being tracked. Now, that's not the only reason though. There is still another reason and I'll show you why. Now, when you add your git ignore, you usually want to do it at the beginning of your project when you first uh, add the repository and then over time, you can change it and maybe add new things that you want to ignore, things like that. So it's not really common that you would add the git ignore at the end of the project since what's the point? You already committed everything. But that's not what we're talking about here. So let's go ahead and make some more changes to our log.txt. In theory, it should show that there's nothing here. There's no changes because it's being ignored. So let's go ahead and check the status after we changed it. And you can see it still says it's modified. So what's going on? Well, pretty much in the cache, in Git's cache, it's still sort of remembering the files instead of completely ignoring them. So what you actually have to do is fix all of these untracked files so that they are ignored and they're off the cache. So the way to do this is first to remove all of the untracked cache files. So git rm dash r dash dash cached and then dot. So this will remove all of the cached files. So you can see just like that, it's all gone. Don't worry, it doesn't remove your files. It just removes them from the remembering kind of system of Git. Now you're going to do a standard commit, adding everything. And I'm just going to say fixed file tracking. There we go. So now we did all of that. So let's go ahead and make some changes to our log. I'm going to go like that. And let's go ahead and check our Git status now. And there we go. You can see nothing happened, even though we made a commit. So before I go off here, I just want to talk a little bit about the different things you can do with our thing here, our git ignore. So what I'm going to do is add a new section called auto generated directories. Auto generated DIRs. Now I'm going to make a new directory here called autogen. And I'm going to CD into Autogen. Now I'm just going to touch a bunch of text files, just a bunch of spam. Just like that. I think three is enough. So we're going to, let's just say these are auto generated files. Okay. So I'm going to first uh, commit all of them. Well, actually, I don't want to commit these. But what I want to do is commit a, a new git ignore. So I can edit it and I can commit this new git ignore so that we ignore these files. And we're going to use the same process as before. But um, I don't want to really go through and specify autogen slash a.txt slash b.txt. If you have a hundred, a thousand auto generated files, this gets a little bit tedious. So the easiest way to do this is just do autogen slash and then star. So star will basically ignore everything inside the autogen directory. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And now I'm going to go and commit my changes. So I'm going to say edited git ignore. Just like that. There we go. Oh, whoops. I'm still in the autogen directory. Edited git ignore. There we go. We did that now. So now why don't we go ahead and change some of these files. So I'm going to go into my autogen. I'm going to edit B, I'm going to edit A, just like that. I'm going to maybe edit C as well. And now let's go ahead and see what happens when we check our status. You can see that there's nothing there. So obviously, we don't really have this whole remembered system error. Uh, this is because, of course, at, at the beginning, we edited our log.txt txt before we actually committed it or before we started working on our git ignore so it's still remembering it but in this case we didn't actually modify it we added the git ignore and then we added all of the files here and edited them so this won't work uh, we don't have to do this whole clearing the cache but just remember that for the future 
if you if you add the git ignore a little bit later um after you you know for example you have some auto generated files that have already been modified and listed in the system and then you add the git ignore just make sure to remove them from the cache using the method i taught you in this video all right that's pretty much it for auto generated files git ignores uh, you can pretty much do whatever you want with these you can put as many files directories you can do everything with this. A git ignore is a very useful feature, especially for much larger projects. If you're using something like an already existing engine, uh, Unity, Unreal Engine for making games, Visual Studio, for example, creates a lot of auto-generated files. It's very useful to have a git ignore to ignore these um, so that when you push it to GitHub or when you want to share it somewhere, it does it very quickly and it doesn't take hours just uploading random gibberish that can be created instantly pretty much so that's just a really useful feature and that is why git ignores uh you should use them in all of your projects all right let's move on